Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Good morning. Our opening hymn is number 435, Be Not Afraid. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, Though you do not know the way, you shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always come follow me and I will give you rest if you pass through raging waters in the sea you shall not drown if you walk amid the burning flames you shall not be harmed if you stand before the powers of hell and death is at your side know that i am with you through it all be not afraid i go In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist today, we pause. We ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, your coming was foretold by the prophets of old. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, the Virgin Mary, bore you in her womb with loving beyond all telling. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, John the Baptist made you known when at last you came. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. May the glorious intercession of the Virgin and Martyr St. Lucy give us a new heart, we pray, O Lord, so that we may celebrate her heavenly birthday in the present age, and so behold things eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. When Balaam raised his eyes <clears throat> and saw Israel encamped tribe by tribe, the Spirit of God came upon him, and he gave voice to his oracle. The utterance of Balaam, son of Beor, the utterance of a man whose eye is true, the utterance of one who hears what God says and knows what the Most High knows of one who sees what the Almighty sees, enraptured and his eyes unveiled. 
How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel. <clears throat> they are like gardens beside a stream, like the cedars planted by the Lord. His wells shall yield free-flowing waters. He shall have the sea within reach. His king shall rise higher, and his royalty shall be exalted. Then Balaam gave voice to his oracle. The utterance of Balaam, son of Beor, the utterance of a man whose eye is true, the utterance of one who hears what God says and knows what the Most High knows, of one who sees what the Almighty sees, enraptured and with eyes unveiled. I see him, though not now. I behold him, though not near. A star shall advance from Jacob, and the staff shall rise from Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your, your ways, ways, O Lord. Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Teach, teach me, me your ways, ways O Lord. Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach, teach me, me your, your ways, ways, O Lord. Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Teach, Teach me, your, me ways, your ways, O Lord. O Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Show us, O Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily and fitly proclaim his holy gospel. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had come into the temple area, the chief priests and the elders of the people approached him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them in reply, I shall ask you one question, and if you answer it for me, then I shall tell you by what authority I do these things. Where was John's Baptist from? Was it, was it of heavenly or of human origin? And they discussed this among themselves and said, if we say of heavenly origin, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we fear the crowd, for they have regard for John as a prophet. So they said to Jesus in reply, we do not know. He himself said to them, neither shall I tell you by what authority I do these things. The gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading today, we hear about Balaam. Who in the heck was Balaam? We don't hear about him very often, but if you have time today, go to your Bibles and look up chapter 22 of the book of Numbers. There is an interesting story about Balaam. Um, the background of this story is uh, 
The Israelites and the Moabites didn't get along very well together. They were cousins, but sometimes cousins don't get along too well. And um, so the Israelites were moving through the territory of the Moabites, and the Moabite king by the name of uh, Balak wasn't too happy to see these people trampling through his property and so on. So he calls his prophet Balaam, and he tells him to go out and put the hex on the Israelites to curse them. And in that culture, in that time, it was thought that once you bless somebody, the blessing is going to become a reality, and you can't take it back. Once you curse somebody, it's going to be effective. So Balaam is told to go to put the curse on the Israelites, and he gets on his donkey, and he's on his way uh, to a cliff overlooking where the Israelites were, and all of a sudden, the donkey stops. Well, have you ever worked with donkeys sometimes they they can be pretty stubborn um, but Balaam he starts beating his donkey and the donkey suddenly has had enough of it he turns around and says why are you beating me I mean things like that happen all the time some of you work with horses Myra probably had that experience with the horses talking to you um, and Balaam just responds he's not surprised at all that his donkey just asked him a question he says well, I'm beating you because you don't obey me. And the donkey says, haven't I always been obedient? Balaam says, I guess you have. Uh, do you think maybe I have a reason for not obeying you? Balaam says, I never thought of that. And then the, the donkey says, well, look ahead. And here he sees a big angel with a sword blocking the way. And Balaam just about falls off the donkey. And then uh, the angel says to Balaam, go ahead and do what you're about to do. So Balaam goes, he comes to the edge of the, the cliff overlooking the Israelites, and every time he opens his mouth trying to curse the Israelites, it comes out in a blessing. And that's kind of the, basically the story of Balaam and his talking donkey. Uh, it's a delightful story. Um, and we have to realize that in the Bible, very often the authors use stories to teach messages, just as we do in everyday life. Uh, there are many different ways of expressing the truth. Parables, for example. The parables of Jesus are necessarily real-life stories, but they're stories that meant to, are meant to teach a lesson. So we have to be aware of that. And the lesson here is, is that, you know, it's wrong to try to go against God's plan. If God has a plan for you and refuse it, uh, it's going to lead to disaster or whatever. Uh, your best to do of God's will as you know it to be and not be opposed to it uh, or turn away from it. Uh, and ultimately, God is in charge. Um, things will work out. And very often, the things we don't want to do, God has planned for us to do, and we find out as we go ahead and do it in the long run that it was the right, right thing to do. In any case, uh, it's a delightful story. I encourage you to look it up, chapter 22 in the book of Numbers, and delight in, in the episode between uh, Balaam and his talking donkey. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, help us always to strive to do your will rather than turn and go another way. Grant us this, Lord, in the favors we ask in Jesus' name. Pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Archbishop George Lucas, Bishop Conley, and Bishop Hannafeld, and for all leaders in the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all politicians who serve us in public office, that they will support life and oppose abortion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the supreme justices, that they will rule in favor of protecting the lives of the unborn. In the Dobbs case, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that they may experience the healing presence of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they will enjoy the eternal life with the risen Lord and Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parents who mourn the loss of a child, that they may find comfort in their faith in Jesus, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and torture to death and in daily many parts of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocation to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray now for all of our unspoken needs and intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Deacon Mike Plotzek. He died Sunday. We pray for him and his family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the victims of the hurricane or the tor tornadoes in the southeast, uh, for the families and loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we offer this mass this morning for the living and deceased of the Henry and Lorraine Iwan families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Father in heaven, please grant us these and all our needs, for which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual dream. Blessed, Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among the, your gifts to us, and may while we grant you grant us to celebrate directly here below, devoutly here below, may gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he has soon to this first coming the holiness of human flesh, and so fulfill the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or the offer for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being, and paying homage to you, their eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, and Andrew, St. Lucy, and all the saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count them on the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. We offer to your majesty the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of life and eternal chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and accept them as you once were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and I, and the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar may receive the most holy body and blood of your Son and be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who are those sinners who hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Isidore, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weigh in our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. And share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 329, Gift of Finest Wheat.
You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn is number 616. I have loved you. I have loved you. With an everlasting love I have called you, and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you, and you are mine. Seek the face of the Lord and long for him. He will bring you his light and his peace. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. Seek the face of the Lord and long for him. He will bring you his joy and his hope. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you 
and you are mine. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. 